Hello, and welcome back to Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion. This week we're joined by Dr. Roberto Gilli from the National Institute of Astrophysics, speaking with us from Italy. We'll talk about his recent discovery of six galaxies huddled around a supermassive black hole in the early universe. But first, we're going to take a look at the massive red giant star Betelgeuse, finding it's not as big or as close to exploding as we thought. Speaking of exploding stars, because why not? We take a look at a pair of massive stars doomed to end their lives in a dramatic fashion. And we'll take a look up at our night sky and learn how to see a meteor shower happening this week. Near the end of 2019, the red giant star Betelgeuse grew dimmer as seen from Earth. This phenomenon was found to be caused by a cloud of dark gas and dust. A second dimming seen this year, however, was found to be the result of changes in the star itself. A new study reveals Betelgeuse is both smaller and closer to Earth than previously believed. Researchers also found the star is still fusing helium, suggesting it will not erupt as a supernova for another 100,000 years or more. Next, next week, we'll talk with Dr. Meredith Joyce from Australian National University, who led this discovery. Make sure to tune in starting October 27th. A rare wolf ray binary star system sitting 8,000 light years from Earth is poised to explode in a titanic eruption that will end with the formation of one or more neutron stars or black holes. Lucky for us, the Earth will be well out of the way of the torrential stream of radiation this event will produce. A new study from the University of Sydney finds a spiral of gas and dust seen around the pair ex is expanding much more slowly than expected within these rare systems. Researchers believe this could be due to the rapid rotation of the larger of the two stars. Back here on Earth, the Orionid meteor shower will peak on the evenings of October 20th and 21st, providing a display of meteors streaking across the sky. The, an the annual show of meteors can delight with up to 20 shooting stars per hour. Sky gazers wishing to view this event should head out to dark skies away from city lights. The display will first be seen low on the eastern horizon, just before midnight, centered on the constellation Orion. In the hours before dawn, the center of the event will move toward the southwest. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. This week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we talk to Dr. Roberto Gilli from the National Institute of Astrophysics, joining us from Italy. We'll talk about his recent discovery of six galaxies huddled around a supermassive black hole in the early universe. Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion. 
We are happy to be joined by Dr. Roberto Gili. He is from the National Institute for Astrophysics in Italy, and he recently made an interesting discovery about some galaxies found orbiting a primitive supermassive black hole. Welcome to the show, Roberto. Thank you, thank you very much. So can you tell us a little bit about what it is that you found and what makes this finding so interesting? So what we found uh, is a, a series of galaxies uh, or a group of galaxies uh, that is surrounding uh, a very massive black hole uh, in the early universe. The black hole light, uh, I mean, is uh, uh, emitted when the universe was less than a billion years old. And uh, uh, what uh, we know is that uh, the black hole is very massive as well. It has a, a billion uh, solar masses uh, mass. Uh, and uh, um, the big challenge uh, about uh, systems uh, like this uh, is that uh, we still do not know uh, how they could uh, grow so massive uh, so quickly because the universe was relatively young. And what uh, theorists uh, uh, always thought uh, is that uh, uh, such uh, objects uh, must form in uh, uh, dense environments where uh, there are large amounts uh, of gas uh, that could uh, uh, be um, available for black hole feeding. So um, essentially what we discovered is that uh, it is actually true that uh, such a massive black hole is living uh, in an overdense environment because we could count uh, how many galaxies are surrounding it, compare this density with the average density of the matter at the epoch. And what we showed is that uh, really this is an overdense environment. And so the idea that uh, the gas availability is uh, sufficient uh, to grow the black hole is, uh, is, uh, is confirmed. This idea uh, that theorists uh, were, were thinking of is confirmed observationally. Ah, so, and that, go ahead. Sorry, that, that, and that's the first time that uh, actually uh, such a structure is uh, uh, really confirmed. There have been many attempts uh, in the past uh, on this uh, quasar itself, but also on other quasars uh, at similar distances. But uh, unfortunately, all the results uh, were a kind of elusive. There was no uh, you know, significant uh, measure where you could say that uh, really uh, these massive black holes were surrounded by other galaxies that were living in dense environments. So our result is the first uh, demonstrating that this is actually true, at least for this system. Hmm. So how were galaxies different in, in this era of the universe and what does this help teach you about them? Uh, you mean how would, they are different with respect to, you know, more uh, uh, lo local galaxies? Yeah. So yes. The, 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 the main uh, difference is that uh, um, they are um, uh, smaller in, in size, that is what we know, but yet uh, they are uh, um, luminous. So the luminosity density or the star formation uh, uh, rate density is pretty high as compared to galaxies in the more recent universe. So this is a kind of different uh, difference we, we, we could see. And uh, importantly, uh, such systems uh, can be selected because they have very peculiar colors. So when we looked at those galaxies, uh, you know, in, in optical images, and we compare uh, um, the light uh, from these galaxies in different uh, filters, so at different uh, wavelengths, uh, they have a very, very red colors. So actually, they are called dropouts because uh, Essentially, there is no, no light in a filter, and suddenly there is a light in another filter. And this is a feature that allows us to select uh, those distant, uh, distant galaxies. Once we have selected the other complicated things is to really demonstrate, demonstrate that they are really that far, and then uh, one has to collect uh, spectra and, uh, by, uh, with, the, with the spectra. Uh, actually measured the distance of, of these systems. It's fascinating. 
<clears throat> so of course, you know, one of the big questions is how do these supermassive black holes, how do, how do they form, especially that quickly? <laughs> that's, uh, un that, that's still unsolved. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, it's the, the immediate question uh, uh, you may ask uh, once you, you discover systems like this. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, um, they've been discovered already uh, more than 20 years ago, but still uh, uh, we do not really know how it is possible that uh, the growth is so fast. Uh, there are uh, many theories uh, uh, that try to explain this, uh, uh, starting from uh, what, what are called seeds black holes. So uh, you start from something that is smaller and then through rapid accretion of gas, you grow up to millions uh, or billions of solar masses. And the uh, theories are uh, um, uh, proposing that uh, these seeds uh, have uh, uh, wildly different origins and also that their masses uh, span a very wide range. So there are a few theories saying that uh, seeds uh, are remnants uh, from uh, uh, the uh, um, explosion of uh, the first stars. So they are, uh, uh, so to speak, light seeds uh, with masses of roughly 100 solar masses or so. And on the other extreme, uh, there are theories saying that uh, uh, instead, if you have uh, some uh, uh, peculiar environmental condition, uh, big clouds of gas uh, can collapse altogether into a black hole. And this mechanism could uh, give rise to seeds uh, of the order of 10 to the fifth solar masses. So there, are, there is a very broad range of masses proposed for these seeds which, uh, in my opinion, reflects uh, the fact that we do not know anything. <laughs> it's, too, it's too uncertain. Uh, uh, there are simulations that are not only, you know, analytical computation, there are very detailed simulations, uh, but uh, we still have to really prove uh, what, what is the origin. We still have to really uh, catch uh, a, a black hole uh, so early that we could see uh, the mass of the original seed. Mm -hmm. This is a very, very challenging uh, thing to, to, to observe and uh, is a topic that uh, um, is fascinating and also uh, people uh, uh, will likely pursue with all, you know, uh, the future observatories in, in, any, in any wave band. Mm hmm And um, what, can you talk a little bit about um, the feeding of these black holes? The, you know, the press release sent out by you know, ESO showed ribbons of gas coming in. Can you tell us a little bit about those structures and how, how they help uh, form, yes. form the black hole? So um, the, the, well, the paper uh, and what we, what we say in the paper uh, is that we observed this uh, group of galaxies and, and the black hole uh, with them. So uh, we know that they form a, a large scale structure. The overall extension of the structure is about uh, um, 10 megaparsec altogether. Uh, uh, what we do not uh, uh, probe, what we do not demonstrate uh, is that uh, uh, this structure is filled by gas. So we do not actually uh, prove what is the, the mechanism uh, for feeding the black hole. What we uh, observed is this distribution of galaxies, which is uh, what uh, you would expect uh, if you just uh, um, uh, uh, you know, follow the collapse of uh, early structures uh, under the effect of gravity. And so uh, the primordial fluctuation grow and grow and the, the biggest fluctuation grow earlier. And uh, in those, in those uh, uh, collapsed systems, uh, matter organizes in a sort of uh, web-like uh, structure. So made of filament of uh, matter, sheets uh, of matter. 
and uh, at the nodes of various uh, filaments where the density is higher, again, star formation is, uh, uh, is promoter. Gas collapse is a favorite and star formation is promoter. And so at the nodes of these various filaments, uh, we should see uh, uh, the formation of the first uh, galaxies and black holes. So uh, I think we pinpointed, uh, uh, in a way, the nodes of this structure, but uh, the, um, the, the gas that is, uh, is uh, uh, pervading all these filaments uh, has still to be probed uh, observationally. And so, uh, um, as you go out looking at the you know, large scale um, structure of the universe, some of the largest things we see are the, are, is the cosmic web. Yes, ribbons co uh, connecting galaxies and clusters of galaxies together. Uh, is, are these ribbons that we that you found um, in the early universe related to that cosmic web at all? Yes, they are actually part of the cosmic web. They are probably one of the parts of the cosmic web uh, that is uh, collapsed first and is uh, uh, growing fast, and also as uh, time goes by, uh, such a structure is probably evolving into what uh, is now a big, uh, massive uh, cluster of galaxies, like, for instance, uh, the Coma Cluster, one of the biggest uh, that we, we, we know uh, locally. So one may say that uh, the group we have observed is certainly part of the cosmic web, and is probably the progenitor, the ancestor of uh, one of the biggest uh, local uh, clusters that we know in, in quite detail. Wow, wow, that is absolutely fascinating. It's, it's like a baby picture of <laughs> the <laughs> largest <laughs> things in the cosmos. <laughs> yes, exactly. There are, there are many simulations uh, uh, now. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the statistics uh, of galaxies we observed is still limited because uh, we measured, uh, uh, we counted six galaxies. We have many more candidates that we could confirm and likely the structure is populated by tens, uh, probably hundreds of galaxies fainter than what we could see now. Um, uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, uh, according to simulations, uh, uh, this is exactly how the big cluster form. You start from something that is quite widespread in the sky, and then again progressively, uh, under the effect of gravity, things uh, get uh, collapsing into the uh, densest part of this uh, structure. And uh, so also the, 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 the size of the structure is, is reduced. As, as you said, probably we are seeing the, really the, the origin, the beginning of <laughs> the, the, cluster, the cluster formation. That's, to me, it's just so fascinating. So what role could dark matter play in these structures? And what can these structures help teach us about dark matter? Well, we think that uh, uh, all this uh, collapse we were talking about is uh, uh, really uh, ruled by, by dark matter. Actually, this cosmic web uh, uh, we said earlier is, is mainly formed by, by dark matter. And uh, it's, it's a kind of the backbone of the, of the, of the web. And then uh, again, because of uh, gravity, gas uh, is trapped uh, into these uh, filamentary structures made of, of dark matter. And uh, after dark matter has attracted all this gas, then collapse can start and the formation of stars can, can start. So, um, Dark matter is, is uh, I mean, we do not know the origin of dark matter, but uh, we think uh, uh, that uh, uh, is, is fundamental for the growth of structure, and in particular growth of uh, uh, galaxy clusters. Um, uh, this study, uh, I think, uh, uh, at the moment cannot uh, add much uh, to the comprehension of uh, what, uh, what dark matter, what, sorry, dark matter is. It, uh, it says that uh, what we see is consistent uh, with, with what we know about dark matter, but uh, it, doesn't give, it doesn't give you an additional clue on, on what it is. 
Hmm, that's, that's interesting. So, <clears throat> of course, the, um, the extremely large telescope is yes. due to go online, hopefully, in 2025. Um, what do you hope to find with that? And we'll, what will that instrument help uncover? That would be a great, a great instrument for measuring uh, the redshift uh, of uh, faint galaxies uh, that uh, uh, at the moment uh, uh, we do not know how, how distant they are. Because uh, to, uh, to measure the distance, uh, so the redshift of such faint systems, you really need uh, 30 class uh, meter telescopes. So um, the, the ELT, for instance, uh, would uh, allow us uh, to actually measure the distance uh, of tens of galaxies in uh, structures like this. So it would be an incredibly powerful instrument to really map uh, the entire structure. And uh, besides uh, measuring the, the amount of galaxies, the total amount of matter uh, in, in the structure that it is, it could also give us uh, some information of the average distribution of uh, the luminosity and mass of these very galaxies and uh, tell us whether uh, really uh, they, there is some environmental difference uh, that is uh, um, causing galaxies in uh, overdense structure to be, for instance, on average, more massive uh, uh, or even more compact than those in uh, uh, um, average density fields. So besides counting galaxies, we could also investigate uh, the distribution of uh, their masses, the distribution of their star formation rates, uh, and uh, understand uh, how environment plays a role in the formation of stars. That's fascinating. <clears throat> so thank you so much for being on the show, Roberto. It was great having you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And that was uh, Dr. Roberto Chile from the National Institute for Astrophysics. Next week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we'll talk with Dr. Meredith Joyce from Australian National University. We'll be discussing her work finding that the star Betelgeuse is both smaller and closer than astronomers previously believed. Subscribe to this channel and never miss an episode. Join us each week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion as we bring space and astronomy news together with groundbreaking scientists directly to listeners and viewers around the globe. We depend on support from viewers like you. To help support this program with a one-time donation or a paid subscription starting at just 99 cents a month, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net forward slash support. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your wonder alive. If you enjoyed this episode of Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, please download and share the episode on YouTube, Facebook video, or on any major podcast provider. For more details on space and astronomy news, please visit thecosmiccompanion.com or thecosmiccompanion.net.